Hey everyone, welcome back to Curve. My name is Jason Muller and today I come to you with one of my favorite fish of the Hudson River, which is the American eel. Um, very important species here in the river. We do a lot of work with eels throughout the year. Um, there's one right here in our tank. And you can see this eel, not very large, but eels can actually grow to be about one to two feet long, even three feet. I think the largest ever recorded was almost five feet. Um, and I think the record weight was about 17 pounds, but few would see them very large, um, at least in comparison to those. Um, this is the type of the size we find here when we're doing our seining programs. And they have a very slippery body here. You can see it's very difficult to hold them. That's because their body is covered in a slime, which actually helps keep them moist if for some reason they come out of the water, um, which I will mention in a few seconds why they would. Um, but in terms of anatomy, a lot of students will always ask, are these fish, are they snakes, are they electric eels? They're not electric eels, and they are fish. We know that because they have a dorsal fin going across the top of their body there, which is a little tough to see in the tank here, but they also will have fins, which you can see um, right in front there, and then also the gills. So they have some gills, which of course all fish have. So that is really how we know this is a fish. Um, in terms of their life cycle, American eels have a very unique life cycle. They're actually born in the Sargasso Sea, which is near Bermuda, and right out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. They will spend the first year of their life migrating to the east coast of the United States, tributaries like the Hudson River, Chesapeake Bay, um, and they will enter these bodies of water, usually when they're about one year old. We call them at that stage glass eels, and you can see on our graphic here, the life cycle thanks to the DEC. Um, once they get into the river, they will continue their way north um, in search of freshwater streams, and that's where they will spend most of their life. Um, some will actually stay in the estuary as well, but they will live to be anywhere from about 15 to 20 years old. Um, I think they've been reported even older than that. Um, but eventually, once they get uh, to that adult stage, they will actually see their body change colors. They will turn like a silvery color. They call them silver eels. At that point, they will migrate back out to the ocean, spawn, lay their eggs, and then die. So that is their life cycle. There's very little known about their migration and what happens during the migration because we really can't track them in any way. The only tracking that we do here is tracking them when they come into the river at that glass seal stage. And we've been participating in a project for about eight years now, which is headed by the DEC, which is the Eel Migration Project. And we count these little glass eels as they are coming by here in Yonkers. We have a fight net stationed at our marsh. When they enter the water in February, usually once the waters get to be about 40 degrees, they will migrate north, get into that net. We go out there every afternoon in spring, count them, release them, record weather and water quality data, and then they go on their way. Um, we catch anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 of these little glass seals when we do this project. So a really important data that's being collected, about, you know, I think 15 sites participate in the project. So a really cool thing. And it's really helping us raise awareness of the eels because they are a very important species here in the Hudson River. Um, they tell us a lot about water quality and their populations are really plummeting back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, overfishing, illegal harvesting, especially when they're at that glass seal stage. They go for like $2,000 per pound on the market. They also face things like climate change, parasites, uh, waterfront development, uh, all sorts of obstacles along their way when they're migrating dams. Um, when I did mention that they have that slime on their body, they can actually get around structures and continue their migration because they can go out of the water and stay moist. So that is an important adaptation that they do have and they can use that. But a really important species. Um, we also obviously get data during our seine programs. We catch on average about 50 eels per year, catch and release back out into the river. Uh, you can note their color there. They have a very, you know, kind of brownish, sort of greenish color, which blends in nicely with the sand, the sediment. Eels will spend most of their life at the bottom of the river in that mud. And they'll bury themselves in there, blend in. Really helps them protect themselves. It's a great adaptation that they have. Um, they're not great hunters. They're mostly scavengers. They'll eat dead things, but they can get small crustaceans. Um, little fish really are kind of like ambush sort of uh, feeding where they will hide in the sand and pop out when they see food. 
Um, they are prey for a lot of larger animals like striped bass, um, shorebirds, things like that. And of course, us people, um, we do eat American eels and things like sushi. Um, so they do face a lot of challenges. Um, but these eels are, like I said, really important, a really important indicator species for the health of the Hudson River. Um, they tell us a lot about water quality. So we try to tell as much information we can to our students about these guys because they are really important out here in the river. Um, you know, if we have them in any of our tanks here, you really rarely see them. We usually have about three in our tank, but they, like I said, like to be buried under the substrate, under the surface, and you really don't see them at all because they like darkness, and they are those ambush predators. But really quite one of my favorites, so I hope you all can come down and take a look at our eels and get out into that river to try to catch some and learn about them. Uh, but that's all for today. Next time when we're back, we'll feature another one of our fish here in Curb. But for now, thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.